Oh my god! Oh, a new light box. Huh. Um, well, it's good enough. So, we're gonna talk about... Let me get the box so I can say his name. <clears throat> the reformatted R48 SG Optus Promenon Severed Geist from Mastermind Creations. Okay. Now, he is a figure that I have wanted for a while. Um, this is actually a recolor of the original version, which is just called the SR48 Optus Promenon, which I do believe that is based off of, well, and this one too, is based off of like an IDW design. I don't know. I'm a fake fan. I don't actually read the Transformer comics. I do know that this color scheme is from the Shattered Glass dimension. Um, what the fuck is Shattered Glass, though? Well, it's Optimus, but evil. And his phrase is, till all are gone. Kind of cringe, actually. Uh, well, anyways. So, he's a convention thing, I think? What I mean by that is, basically, from what I can gather, uh, this comic book line color alteration is started as, like, a project from a convention where they let a company make recolors and someone decided to make Autobots evil and Decepticons good and Soundwave is an 80s dude bro and his cat is, like, fucking weird. Where this design differs from Shattered Glass is Shattered Glass is G1 inspired. This one is clearly based off of some comic book or he's, like, a beefcake warrior soldier guy. Yes. I know what I'm talking about. So, let's talk about accessories before we do anything else. Uh, move him to the side. I'm gonna break illusion for a second. So, his accessories are, from least impressive to most impressive, is the instructions, a card with stats on the back. Mastermind's Creations cards are actually made out of, like, what can I only describe as, like, credit card material, um, a baggie full of stuff, which we will get to, and a cape. And the reason why this is most interesting is because it's resealable. Keep the cape fresh, I suppose. So, his first accessories that he comes with are two of these little blasters. They're actually supposed to be on his arms. I have just left them off because in the box, he came with them off. They go on that side and that side. He also comes with a gun. In fact, he comes with two guns. Uh, the handle is a fold-out handle kind, and it has a little peg hole, which goes to the peg in his hand, which is right there. Of course, I'm interested to see if that would fit other model kits and figures because, well, this is a third party figure, peg hand is kind of like a standard thing. The other small accessories he comes with is a matrix of, I mean, can you call it a matrix of leadership if he's the bad guy? I guess, matrix of small dick evilness, also the handles are floppy. So, your matrix of Evil has posability. Wee. Uh, it's because they come off and they peg onto his waist. Because only the core actually goes in his chest. Uh, he also comes with a alternate faceplate. This one is maskless. Compared to his masked face. And he comes with an entirely separate head in a different color scheme. That's because this head is actually for uh, Optus Promenon, the original version of this. His last accessory is a giant axe. Now the axe comes in three parts. Giant blade and two handle pieces. Um, I am not the smartest man in the world, and I thought this and this is how it would work at first. And I thought, like, okay, so it's just this tiny little thing. 
Then I saw this, and I was like, oh, okay, so the axe has, like, that. And then I saw that. And then all the lights in my brain turned on, and I realized that it's this big axe with two pegs, two peg holes, for you to grab. Presumably so he can double hand it. Uh, also, if you want, you totally could just make it a tiny little small axe. And I don't know if it comes across on film, but the blade is ever so slightly transparent. Uh, because this is supposed to be an Inerdron axe, so the silver part is metal, and then the purple part is energy. So when you swing it through the air, you should be playing with it, going beer, 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 and then... It didn't cut through him, because it's plastic. Well, anyways, <clears throat> on to how to install his accessories. His arm cannon thingies are pretty easy enough. They just pegged on like I showed you. His hand gun, his gun hand, goes in that peg, which is a surprisingly tight fit. Wrap the fingers around, wrap that around, and then get the thumb looking natural. And he has two, so you could double hand it, but since he has this giant fucking axe... <clears throat> Also, have, have I said the swear words enough for people to understand that this is uh, clearly aimed at older collectors? I mean, this figure is like $90 at its cheapest. So. Oh, so that fell off. So that shows you that these things aren't uh, the most secure. They probably come off for transformation reasons, which we will get to the transformation and the problem with this being a recolor. <clears throat> now, as for the alternate head, you actually have to screw it off and replace the head that way. Um, it's fine by me, because I've never really been a fan of maskless Optimus. Uh, not for the reason why the live-action fans aren't a fan of it. Um, just because, like, he's a robot. He doesn't really need lips. Which, since we're on the face, I'm going to go ahead and talk about this. See that little spot right there? That fleck? That's a paint flaw. From this side, perfectly fine. You turn it to this side and you see the paint flaw. Um, I'm sorry if I've ruined this entire review for you and that's all you can see now. That's uh, ultimately your problem, not mine. Also, his neck in here has a little bit of tilt before the actual plate his head rests on starts to tilt back. So you could work the both in tandem to get some pretty, I guess some pretty good, some pretty good upwards looks, but then you pan out and it, he just kind of looks like he got doom eternal And as for the last accessory, before we move on to articulation, that's the um, increasingly more floppy matrix. I probably shouldn't have fucked with the handles. Uh, the instructions, reasons why... They are the least impressive thing on this thing, next to the <clears throat> card, is because it's called Matrix Removal, um, which I didn't have the base figure, so I don't know if it did or not. I can only assume that that means the base figure came with the Matrix already inside the chest, uh, which, cool, mine didn't. And I guess with that, we can move on to my gripe with the instructions altogether. So, this is the problem with it being a recolor. The instructions, while they are... Let's just move it to the side. The instructions, while they are nice on good paper, and they even included a nice content that shows his fabric cloak, his PVC scarf, his two laser beam shooters, his core handles, his battle axe, three parts, and his ion blasters and his alt head with a mouth's place, and see there, oh, Optus Pexis, my bad. <clears throat> Actually, yeah, my bad. I'm pretty sure there's some people already complaining about that. The fact that he's a recolor means that the instructions are the same as the original version, and the original version came in a car mode, apparently. 
so the instructions are backwards for me. So, I kind of know how to transform this guy. Not really. I could figure it out. Um, but I bought this guy for articulation, not for a truck. Uh, because, you know, every Optimus Prime is a truck in some form. <clears throat> However, let's try to figure out the matrix. So, step one is you come back here, you open these up, you swing them down completely, you then move this up, then you turn them around, then you tilt these arms up and over like this. Probably should have taken the weapons out of his hands for this. And it says just to move these back? Okay, and then this, ah, uh, okay. And then that's where the core goes. You have to take it out of the thing and put the core in somehow. Uh, gonna do this off camera. There we go. His matrix of, I don't know, evil is inside of his chest now. So now we just plug that back together. We move these back up. Lower his arms back down. Spin him back around. And then get this all pegged together. Which, in the box, this actually came not pegged together. Came in, like, that position. And his head came pushed down. And I genuinely thought that I got a broken version. But no, I just had a version that somebody fat thumbed into the box. So anyways, you fiddle with it until it's, there it is. All right. <clears throat> and now his matrix is in there. Oh, and then I guess if you want to complete the look, you would put his handles on his side skirts. There we go. Now his look is completed. Now, why did I buy a transformer if I'm not going to do the thing that his name implies? Uh, well, because if you know anything about this specific mold, you know that this is an insanely articulated uh, transformer. None more prevalent than with those hands. Jesus Christ. I don't think I've ever seen hands this articulated on a figure of this size that were not modified. Uh, I need to make that distinction because you can get model kits and then you can go and get a upgrade that makes them this articulated. Another minor complaint though, since we're here at the hands, his fingers all have sprue marks on them. I understand this is probably like a factory line thing and it was a machine chopping them off and there's no one there like fine-tuning everything but but when you're collecting figures you get anal retentive about certain things and if you want a pose like that you're kind of inviting people to look at the hand you're kind of inviting people to look at that and the fact that I can catch my nail on it tells me that I should probably go in there with the sponge and file those away. Cool, thanks, fun. <clears throat> I lie, that's actually pretty fun for me. His arms have a full bicep curl, which is really nice. Um, don't mind the gap. I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be there. Uh, hide your weed in there. Uh, that's probably supposed to be there because his arms compress up for transformation. And it's probably just easier to imply the idea of a pipe. I'm not complaining. If it's one less pipe for maximum posability, then fine, maximum posability. Take this out of his hand too. Posability is the exact same on the other arms. And now that I look at it, I actually think that the sculpt here is a mirror image because these pegs, which perfectly fine, he's a robot. Like, some things are just going to be mirrored. Okay, I was going to show the posability of the shoulder, but I knocked it over so I can't use that take, and then when I picked him up, I found this tiny little thing. 
Um, as far as I can tell, nothing fell off him. So, I'll keep an eye out for that, but yeah, apparently things can fall off. Anyways, his arm. Full out, shoulder, and then you can work with the rotation to get his arm completely over. So, while he... Can he... If we work with that... Eh, he can kind of touch his own shoulder. He has to work on it, but yeah. He could, he could pop his shoulder. He could pop his neck. Neck. His legs are on a click. Clickety-click. And ratchety. This can shift up to allow his legs to move out. And then at his taint, he has a swivel mechanic so he can kick up even further. So he can do them high kicks. And then the knee, which the instructions actually tell you to grab at his knee guard and bend like this, is a full knee bend. And then the feet, they have a tilt, they can go forward and back, and then this joint, which I'm assuming is for transformation, can actually allow him to get even more posability, and he has a toe bend. Cool. And then his waist has rotation, side to side, forward and back, all pretty smooth, pretty natural. These little things sometimes have a tendency to get caught, and I don't know if that's the mold or if it's just my model, but I'll have to keep an eye out on that. But the reason why this thing's posability is uh, so good as it is, is because you grab his chest, you pull up, and you have that joint that now reveals itself, which allows him to go forward even further. And then, if you're still not satisfied, you pull a little bit more, which reveals that joint. And now, he can practically break his own back. Uh, the actual original comic, or not comic, fun. The actual original promotional pictures for the base model of this guy showed that he can touch his own toes, so he's officially more flexible than 90% of us. <sighs> the more that I look at this guy, the more sprues I find. Like, right there. I get it. Third party. Small production line, probably not going to sell this specific model for more than a year or two. But I mean, he was also 90 bucks plus. Now, after a quick look, he was actually $114.99, plus tax, plus shipping. Perfectly fine. Third-party company, smaller production line. They don't have the ability to just print money like Hasbro. However, this figure is from 1000 Toys. Yes, it's official, but they also work in a similar manner. Limited runtime, not as long uh, availability, they don't have widespread reach like they do. Uh, this figure, however, is $160, I do believe. I got him on sale for $112, so I wouldn't be able to tell you. Now, while he is an official Master Chief, John Halo, Let's say the more you play with this guy, the more you found little tiny imperfections. The more you found, like, a weird inconspicuous spot on his faceplate. The more you found sprues on his hands, or on the barrel of his gun, or something like that. To most people, that probably wouldn't mean much. But if you're a perfectionist, or you're just screwed in the brain, and you notice small details, that gets under your skin. Gets under my skin. Ultimately, I'm being mean to this figure because I love it. I genuinely like this figure a lot. Um, <clears throat> it's so, so goddamn close to just perfect. But all those, all those small little imperfections is what makes it not perfect for me. Uh, anyways, size. How big is this guy? Well, I don't have any other Masterpiece figures to compare him to. Mostly because I never really liked a lot of G1 Designs heresy, I know. 
<clears throat> but here is a Star Wars Black Series uh, Palpaclean. And he is full head and shoulders, and then some, taller. Uh, so he is pretty big, but not the biggest. But if you're like me, you bought this guy not because he's in some perfect god tier scale. You bought him because he is just the most articulated son of a bitch. I mean, how many other Optimus Primes can just, like, gang signs? Actually, give me a minute, and I'll get this guy into a really dynamic pose to show you what I mean. Like this. Sure, he doesn't look the best from that side, but, you know, that's why you pose him like this, sit him like that, and you fiddle with the foot to get him balanced, and bam! He's... Totes tubular, dudes, my guy. I'm not cool. Now, what would I rate this? Uh, four sprued fingers and one thumbs up. I also forgot to show off the cape. Um, uh, no, uh, no.